Shabbat Shalom Chaldevya and welcome to this week's Shabbat Table Mana. Hope you guys had a great and a blessed week. So for this Shabbat, this Friday evening, we'll be discussing Isaiah 10 verse 15. Isaiah 10 15 and it reads, Would the axe boast itself over him who chops with it? Or the saw exalt itself over him who saws with it, as a rod waving those who lift it up, as a staff lifting up that which is not wood. So basically it says, so will the axe who does the chopping of the wood glorify itself for the wood that lies in pieces, not thinking or knowing that it was the power in the hand that caused it to chop the wood in pieces. And again, will the saw exalt itself or magnify itself above the hand that caused it to saw through wood, not knowing or thinking that it is in the power of the hand that holds it, that caused the axing or caused the sowing. So let's understand the context of this chapter. We see the king of Assyria making war against cities and <coughs> excuse me, conquering kingdoms and adding them, the cities and kingdoms, to his own kingdom. But the chapter goes on by saying that he never realizes that he was only an instrument. He was the rot in the hand of Abayah. Just like an axe in the hand of one who chops down trees. So it was vain thinking. It is self-glorification from this king to think that it was all because of his military force or his brilliant war strategies. Father allowed this to happen because of the iniquity on the part of Jerusalem. It was Abba's will. It was his design, his plan. So this king of Assyria was boasting in himself, idolizing himself for something that was not from himself. You see, we all belong to one creator, the one true king, the king of all things. And we are all instruments in his hand and his will. Just as the axe that can't lift it, it say, itself up to chop the wood, the saw that can't move itself forward or backwards to saw the wood, just the same way you and I can't do our ministry work without his guidance. You and I can't pray for people if he does not guide our tongues and our thoughts. We all need his strength daily. We all are supposed to plan our days with him. Making Father the center of everything we do, everything we say. You see, my brother and sister, without the wood, the axe and the saw has no purpose. Without the power of the hand that drives the saw or lifts the axe, both the axe and the saw will simply be useless. You might as well use it as a paperweight. In other words, Prince and Princess of Yah, without the guidance and gifting and presence, importantly, the presence of the Father, we cannot be in purpose. Without Abba Yah, yes, we might be awesome in the eyes of people, but we are weak in the spirit without the Father. Prince and Princess of Abaya, the axe is an instrument in the hand of the one who uses it. So the power and the ability to do something, or what the axe or the saw was created to do, is in the hand of the one who holds it, the one who uses it. If, if the axe and the saw is to be used for a purpose, then the one who holds it decides the purpose. The king of Assyria was a rot. He was an instrument in the hands of the father to bring punishment against Jerusalem. Wisdom and power and authority does not come from you and me. It is a gift and a blessing from the one who owns it. But the word teaches us that father gives as he sees fit. You see, the axe or the saw does not tell the hand how it wants to be used or where it wants to be used. We must be careful how we act or interact on behalf of the kingdom of Yah. 
We must be careful how we handle or use the gifts of the Spirit and even how we share the info, the revelation Father gives us, how we share that with others. We must be careful how we handle the success of blessings that Father gives you and me and our families at work, our businesses and even our ministries. We should never forget whom the glory belongs to. So may we always consider and know that we are vessels in the hand of Yah. He uses us for His purpose. There's this beautiful picture I was once taught about a garden that needed watering. So the owner of this garden picked up his hose pipe that was all rolled up. He connected it to the tap, the water tap. In other words, he connected the, the hose pipe to this water source and he opened the tap for the water to flow through this hose pipe so that he can use this hose pipe to water his garden. So you see, my brother and sister, you and I, we are this hose pipe. If you and I are not available for him to pick us up with his hands and to connect us to his source of life, his ruach or his breath, and uses us as a vessel through whom he works to reach his people, then we are useless to him. We are called to be a vessel in his hand. We are called to be this host pipe to, through which the water flows to water this garden. When we say that we are His, when we say we follow Him and then, then He uses us, then we are just a vessel for His purpose. We are just a host pipe through whom He works, His salvation and His gifts. It's not your gifts, my brother and sister, or your salvation to boast about or to glorify ourselves for. It's the Father's gifts. It's his purpose, it's his will, for his salvation, for his people. So may we, <clears throat> may we always be available and humble like a host pipe in his hands. There's another aspect to this that we should also consider and be very careful of not doing. And that is to glorify people. In other words, imagine the wood gave glory to the axe or to the saw. So what do I mean by this? How many times do we say, my pastor taught me this or my pastor taught me that? Or did you see how that pastor or that brother or that sister prayed for that person and he was healed? You see, do we glorify people for the anointing that work through them? Or do we glorify the Father for His anointing that work through these people as vessels? I've been fortunate in the last few years to have been uh, involved in ministries or where I've met men and women who are so anointed and who are so amazingly being used by the Father for His kingdom. But unfortunately, they are treated like gods in their fellowships or their congregations or in their churches. I've seen how people would just go to church because he or she is preaching. Even the leaders and the elders only comes to fellowship or goes to church if that person is teaching. But let me tell you today, my brother and sister, if that is you, then you are busy with idol worship. If you only see that person as this anointed preacher or this anointed prophet and you don't see the anointing of the Father working through that person, then you and I are glorifying man. Just like the axe and the saw. If you cannot see the power and the strength and revelations of the hand of the Creator at work, then you and I are praising the person just like the axe and the saw is praising itself. Because here's the revelation for today. In case you don't know this, my brother and sister, to glorify man or myself just like the axe or to glorify a person is worship. And worshipping people or objects is idol worship. And worshipping or idol worship any other person or object but Abayah is an abomination to him. The Hebrew word for worship, shachach, 
It means to bow down or to fall down flat. In other words, face down before the King of Kings in awe and reverence for Him and to Him. It is a picture of humility before Abba So worship is the act of attributing reverent honor and homage to Abba So if we do not honor the Father, then whom do we honor? If we do not praise and worship Him, then who do we praise and give glory to? You see, when we do not honor Abba by giving Him the praise and the worship and acknowledgement He deserves, then that is idol worship. Idol worship is the worship of a physical object as a God. Or, or even over or excessive attachment or devotion to something. In other words, giving praise to something or someone, even, even for myself, instead of giving it to Abba Biblically, we can define idol worship or idolatry as anything in defiance of the first two commandments. Because listen to this. Exodus 20 verse 1 to 6 reads the following. And Elua spoke all these words saying, I am Yahuwah your Elua who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of slavery. You have no other mighty ones against my face. In other words, do not give honor to anything or anyone else but me. goes on to say, you do not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of that which is in the heavens above or which is in the earth beneath or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them nor serve them. Father saying, you do not worship anything in the heaven, on the earth or in the waters. You do not make them your master. That goes for you and me. That goes for people that we look up on. That goes for people that we glorify. Abba says, For I, Yahuwah, Yahuwah, am a jealous El, visiting the crookedness of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing loving commitment to thousands to of those who love me and keep my commandments. You see, if we love the Father, then we praise Him, we honor Him. And we keep his commandments. Idolatry is the worship of idols. Idolatry is the worship of graven images, created things, and other so-called gods, or the use of idols. Listen, the use of idols in the worship of Abba Yahuwah. Basically, prince and princess of Yah. Idolatry is anything more important to you than Abba Yahuwah. Idolatry is anything that absorbs your heart and imagination more than what Abba does. Anything you seek to give um, more glory to than what we give Abba glory. An idol is whatever you look at and say in your heart of hearts, if I only had that, or if, 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 if I could feel this, or I could feel that. An idol is anything central or essential to your life and my life. Anything else but Abba Yahuwah. An idol can be that person that stands in front of us on Sunday mornings or on Shabbat. If we worship that person more than the revelation of the Spirit that works through that person of the Father... That is idolatry, my brother and sister. That is idol worship. Exodus 20 verse 1 says, And Elua spoke all these words, saying, I am Yahuwah, your Elua. You see, my dear brother and sister, Abba Yah is saying that He is Elua. He is the Most High God. Not me, not you. Not the king of Assyria, not the axe, not the saw, not your favorite pastor, not your favorite counselor or intercessor or your favorite brother or sister at the church. No one, nothing in the heavens, in the waters or on the earth is more 
important than our Yahweh. He alone is the Most High. So let's honor our Yah in all we do, in all we say, in all we think. In other words, with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul and spirit. You see, because only Father commands, He gives, He saves, He protects. You see, and He's the one who gives life, and He's the one who sustains life. So let's pray. Our, our Father, Daddy, thank you for this week. Father, thank you for Shalom, Abba. Thank you that in the midst of the storm, you are who you are. Abba, you are the one who sits on the throne and that you are the one who is in control, Father. And, and so many times, Abba, we act like we are this axe and this saw. We act like this king of Assyria, Father. And today we, your people, want to come and our, we want to repent of our idolatrous lifestyles, Father, our idolatrous ways, Father, this idol worshipping that we so many times do and continue to do in our lives, Abba. Where we glorify ourselves, where we glorify people above you, Father, where we glorify other objects above you, my King. Today we want to come and we want to repent, Father. Abba, forgive us of our sins, Father, and show us and teach us your ways, Daddy. That we will worship you, Father, that we will be face down in awe and reverence to you, my King, and to no one and nothing else, Father. Thank you, Abba. Thank you for your salvation. Thank you for your son. Thank you that you are life and you are the sustainer of life. May you be glorified in our lives, in our homes, Abba. We praise you and we honor you and we pray all of this in your son, Yoshua. Our master, our king, our savior's mighty name. Please receive this blessing from the father. Abba Yah bless you and keeps you. Abba Yah makes his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Abba Yah lifts up his countenance upon you and he gives you peace. Shalom, shalom, my brother and sister. May you have a blessed week and enjoy your Shabbat.